Lab TV travels to an Air Force research lab in San Antonio, Texas, to meet a team of scientists who help protect us from the flu. Each morning, a FedEx truck backs up to the loading dock and delivers thousands of specimens from all over the world. The samples that arrive in this laboratory have come from someone who's visited their physician because they're ill. We get samples in and we analyze them for respiratory viruses, specifically looking for influenza. Influenza is a virus. It's also called the flu. And a virus is a very, very simple organism. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't even refer to it as an organism. It's essentially a package of nucleic acid. The flu virus cannot exist on its own. It's spread by coughing and sneezing, and also on surfaces that people touch. It likes to infect the cells inside your nose. One of the proteins on the flu virus interacts real well with some of the proteins on the cells of our upper respiratory tract. And so it must bind that protein and that kind of tricks the cell to take it inside. And then the flu nucleic acids actually trick your cell's machinery to make its proteins instead of the cell's proteins. So your cells make lots of new flu viruses. And then you start feeling sick. Influenza starts out, you just feel crummy. Usually, you, the only thing you want to do is go to bed. You typically have a high fever, aches and pains. You're just extremely tired, unlike uh, a cold where you might have just a mild sore throat. It's just not feeling good. The flu is beyond not feeling good. The flu shot is currently the most effective way we have to prevent the illness. And it actually tricks your body into thinking there's been a bit of an infection and it fights it off and builds what's called antibodies. There are three influenza virus types, A, B, and C. We mostly see influenza A. It has subtypes based on two proteins, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, H and N. Flu viruses are always changing, so the lab never knows which one they're going to see. When we get the sample, this laboratory wants to know everything we can about this virus. So the first thing we're going to do is divide this sample up into three different areas. One is for molecular testing, one is for tissue culture testing, classical virology, and one is for archive. And that's very important because that is what is utilized for each year's vaccine. As a matter of fact, this year's current flu vaccine does contain a flu virus that was isolated in this laboratory. Some of the sample gets put in a tissue culture so they can grow it and look at it through a microscope. What we're gonna look at in the microscope are the changes this virus makes on those tissue culture cells. And it's kind of like a puzzle. We don't know when this sample comes in what's there. The molecular team unravels the genetic code of the virus. We're looking at thousands of cases in each individual specimen. We're kind of doing a CSI investigation on that specimen to see if it has the same genetic fingerprint as the current vaccine or not. And those fingerprints keep changing, so they need to keep changing the vaccine each year. Flu viruses are tiny, but they're tricky. Partly what was cool about viruses is how can something that is so simple you know, for example, something with just a very few thousand base pairs relative to the millions and billions that the rest of organisms have kind of take over us, and it actually can. Recently, these scientists helped identify a new strain called Influenza A H1N1. So far, it seems to be acting like other flu viruses, but here at the lab, they're working with people from all around the world to watch it very closely. And their samples are helping to create a brand new vaccine Infectious diseases affect everyone in the world. It is something we're all concerned about. So to be able to know that you affect something that will prevent a disease, it's pretty awesome. To find out more about viruses, influenza, and H1N1, check out labtvonline.org.